Hey guys, thank you for watching Real World Outdoors. You know, in the book of Exodus in chapter 10, when Moses was dealing with Pharaoh, um, the ninth plague that come against him was darkness that could be felt. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 10, verse 21, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven and there may be darkness over the land in Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel, that had, they had light in their dwelling. Nobody moved because it was that dark. You know, I can remember one time as a child, we went to these caverns to visit, and it, well, there was an underground lake, and the fish that were in this lake were blind. You could see all the way down into the water when they turned the lights on on the boat. You could see the fish swimming around. They were blind, but for many hundreds of years, they'd been under that uh, cavern in the darkness, and so they have l just lost their sight over time. And so the man, as we were out there in the boat, he turned the lights off. He, he told everyone, we're going to show you how dark it is. And I put my hand in front of my face, and I could not see my hands. And I'm going to tell you, that's a very unsettling uh, feeling, especially being somewhere where you don't know how to get out of, and it's completely pitch dark. You, there's no way you can find your way out. You know, that's how it is in the world today. It's so dark. There's so many people that are blinded by Satan, and they're walking through They have no idea how to get out of their situation. They have no idea what they can do to get out of this hopeless despair, this lost feeling. Because... Christians are not sharing the light of the world with them. There is a hope. There is a way out. It's Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the way to the Father. He hung on a cross and shed his blood and died and rose again the third day so we could have the victory. You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You know, and I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. There's all kind of bad things in the world that we can get involved in. But, you know, recently there's a movie called Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, we all know what it is, a soft porn. That's, that's what it is. Yet, there's people that profess to be Christians that probably have went to this movie. Your light's not shining. If you're doing stuff like that, you're definitely not shining for Christ. God don't deal with in gray areas. He don't have 50 shades of gray. God just has His way or the highway to hell. There's no, there's no in between. You either serve God or you serve Satan. The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. That means you can't live like a hellion one day and do what you think the world is going to do and, and get along with everybody and just ha you know have a free-for-all and just think everything's cool and then on Sunday morning show up and sit on the pew and think everything's great. You can't do that. God don't want a part-time Christian. He don't want you to show up on Sunday mornings and give him uh, stuff out of your mouth. And I say stuff because I'm trying to use something more vulgar like vomit. He don't want to hear that. He, rather, he looks at the heart. The Bible says, Jesus said, they honor me with their mouth, but their hearts are far from me. There's too many people that are not letting their light shine for Jesus Christ. You're to have the light inside of you that no matter where you go, you can share the word of God. In Psalms 119, verse 11, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. If you've got God's word in your heart, there's things you're not going to do. Why? Because the convicting power of the Holy Ghost and this word will tell you to be holy. He says that uh, the only way to see him is to be holy. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That means you don't do the same things you used to do. You don't go to the same places you used to go if they're sinful because you love God and you want to please him. It's Valentine's Day. The first thing we want to do is, is show that special person in our life how much we love them. My wife, how much I love her and my children. But you know, we need to show God how much we love Him. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. It's one thing to tell somebody something, to tell God you love Him and show up on Sunday and pretend and throw money in the offering and all that. It's another thing to show Him by your actions from your heart. How you speak demonstrates your love for God in a lot of things. He says, out of the mouth comes the abundance of the heart. How is your, your speech, how is your talk when you get around lost people? Are you speaking the same junk that they're speaking, but are you speaking truth, the Word of God? And is your light shining? We're in a dark situation. Never before have we been this close to returning of Christ. And it's time for us to let our light shine for God. The Bible said, as I just told you in Exodus, that the children of Israel had light in their dwelling. That means they actually could see 
you know, if you keep this word hid in your heart, no matter how dark and bleak it gets, you can see how you, where you need to go. You can see the steps you need to make by faith, trusting God and waiting on Him. He wants you to serve Him. He wants you to be bold. He wants you to go forth and not cower down and be afraid that this world's going to somehow infect you. He'd rather you go and infect the world with His light, the light of the world. Light invades darkness. You know, I'm th I think of uh, the Chilean disaster in Chile. The Chilean miners that were trapped 2,000 feet below the earth. August the 5th, 2010, 33 men. You all know the story. We heard about it. It was all over the news. They were trapped for 69 days in the bottom of that mine. They had limited food, limited water. One of the men that helped, uh, one of the first men to come out, he said, the way we survived was we did two devotions a day. He said, we contribute what we've done, them devotions to our survival, the Word of God. Now, this man didn't have a Bible. He didn't stand there with a podium, and he didn't have a little uh, microphone or hold a microphone. He got up there and from his heart with limited light they had, and he, he spoke from his heart the Word of God. How did he have that? It was hid in his heart because he said he went to church, he attended church regularly, and that Word was hid in his heart. And the Holy Spirit quickened him and brought that out. And not only did God use this man mightily to help these men sustain themselves for 69 days so they didn't go crazy and they could stay together because of the hope that God gives you, but 20 of them got born again. Hallelujah. That man may have went to all that, not only to help them in, but so them men would be saved. He proclaimed the truth because he had it hid in his heart. He weren't living two lives. He was living for Christ. Once he got out and, and uh, spent time with his family, he returned back to that mine. He was the first man to go back to that same place and when he went down there, he thanked God for delivering him from the depths. It's time, if you've been delivered from God, if, God, if you've been delivered from the depths by God, if you've been born again by putting your faith in Christ, repenting of your sins, believing on the finished work that Jesus done, it's time to give him thanks for what he's done for you, not with just lip service, but with your actions, your life, how you live, where you go, what you do. Let your light shine for Christ. Until next time, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen.